you all know that Africa is not perfect. Mm-hmm. And if you guys have a chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? First is, when we go out there, I'm sure you've also experienced it. Like we are told we are from Africa. We are not told we are from Kenya, but we are from Africa. So I think uh, if we would have a language which we can communicate like Swahili to be a language that only Africans understand, I think that is something that, that will be very special. Second, I don't think I need a visa to come to Ghana or to any African country. Like, let Africans be free to travel within Africa we without need to have complications. One united Africa. Imagine Africa speaking in one voice. We would be a formidable force. You'll be surprised. There are resources across Africa which we can be the force that before you talk to us, you, you need, everyone would be getting a visa to come to Africa anywhere. And, and you know, most of the people from the other side, they don't require visas to come to Africa. But us, we require visas to, uh, to go their countries. If I am told change Africa, I would make Africa one united Africa. Language, resources, everything. And from there now, we move forward as one formidable force of Africa, United State of Africa. Good morning from Nairobi, Kenya. Listen, when you are visiting this country, always carry a sweater or a jacket. Because when I was coming to this country for the first time, I never knew how super cold this country can be. It's seven o'clock in the morning and I'm freezing. That's why I just wanna just heat my body up. But hey, this is one of the most beautiful and serene estate that I've ever seen. And I wish I can buy a home in here. I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm here to talk about a family that has built a billion dollar empire out of travel and tours. This is something that I never thought it's possible, but Africans always try to make the impossible possible. Listen, I'm that guy on a journey to celebrate every single African. I found myself in the East, here in Kenya, Nairobi, a suburb in Nairobi, and I'm here to tell you guys about bonfire adventures. Who are the people behind it? My name is Simon Kabu, Chairman and CEO of Bonfire Adventures, which is a Kenyan leading tour and travel agency. My name is Mrs. Sarah Kabu, Managing Director, Bonfire Adventures. The company has been there for the last 15 years, and we are proud to have maintained the lead like for the last 10 years. That this company is the leading tour company in the whole of East and Central Africa. Believe me or not, I was blown away when I found out about them. And I know and believe that their story is definitely going to blow your mind. I'm in their neighborhood right now. This is where they live. That's a Range Rover, man. <laughs> the life of the rich. Okay. Is that a Land Cruiser? <laughs> I'm ready for this video. You know what? It's seven o'clock. I hope they are awake. I'm just gonna wake them up. Whether they like it or not, they have to talk to me because it's by force to share stories of Africans to inspire other Africans. Come along with me. I I'm in the spirit, even though it's so cold. Salimia <laughs> watu, salimia watu. Yeah. So today we are supposed to be with Ademai. I don't know if he's right. Hi! Oh, uh, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> ah, good to see. I, I love your estate. Welcome oh, my home. Goodness. Yes. Welcome, Karim. Welcome. Were you guys home. heading out or something? Yes, we are yeah, going exercise. for a jog. <laughs> yeah, I can see you are ready. I, I, I think I also came at a good time. Yeah. <laughs> we call it public opinion here. Oh, really? Oh. Oh. It, it, it's so cold in Nairobi, so I decided to put on a jacket. Wow. Uh -huh. But if you guys are going out, uh, why not we work out together? We work out together. Let us yes. start. I I, I, it's called yeah. the sharpshooter. What is it called? That vitamin shoot. Yes, we, we take some, uh, some juice so, so that we can proceed. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Let me... No, you it's okay. Just come in. I know you're from the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, so welcome home. <laughs> Okay, are you ready for the joke? <laughs> I hope we are not going that far. <laughs> I can only do 6,000 6, steps. Yeah, just have, just have five kilometers on. Let the real joke <laughs> First time, yes. joking with billionaires, man. <laughs> I think I've made it in life. Oh. <laughs> I've made it in life. Jogging with billionaires. You know, I need to tell my mom that I jog with billionaires. You know, it has to be in Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> What's the mom say? <laughs> my, my mom will be super proud of me, man. You, 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 you go systematically. You don't over push yourself. Okay. Because uh, if you want to reach far, yeah. you, you go systematically. You know, like, like now the way people say, mm -hmm. success, mm -hmm. It's not a one-time event. Yep. If you just run, you get out very fast. Wow. But you go, you walk briskly until when you want, you, you are fit enough now to start jogging. Hmm. And you progress until even if you're doing two kilometers, you go continue doing three, four, five, or six. Wow. <laughs> uh, so will you say that is the idea behind you building a successful business? <laughs> That's one of the idea because what we do is that uh, we are normally very patient. The five P's, the persistence, the passion, all that combined. Wow. How long did it take you to build Bonfire Adventures to this stage? 15 years. Wow. We recently celebrated our 15th year anniversary. Yes. During the end of the party last year. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now you guys get it. So Success is not are. built in a day. Yes. It's a morning routine, eh? Yeah, okay, not every morning that we do the jog. Okay. Uh, we do the jog at least three times a week. Occasionally, yes. Uh, sometimes meetings don't allow us. Uh, but we try also to do swimming. Yes. Okay. Or the gym. I hope my people served you already. No, I'm uh, <laughs> Today we we made a feast for you. You know the last time you came and unannounced. <laughs> so so green or yellow juice? This is orange. Ye yellow juice. Okay. The green one made me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the motive. in our culture yeah. we, we normally say uh, a good husband is one who eats well <laughs> because he he has to work to get food <laughs> that's the point uh, because we are like hoteliers we we have to feed, mix both african and western you can take, uh, yes you can I, I really want to tell you guys something. I, I really love the connection and the vibes between you two. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's more like that's the kind of relationship that I want. <laughs> and you know, like sometimes people normally say that it's so difficult to build a business with your wife. So my, my, my question would be like, how did both of you met? And then from there, I would have known how is it like to run a business with your wife, man. Uh, I think I, she has to pick how both of you met because women are yeah. good at answering that question. Yes, I can allow her how we met. Yeah. I just want to talk about how we met. <laughs> Me and I talk about the business part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, 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 are, we have memories. We met for the first time on 1st December 2007. Yeah, so... We had been, we had, we were both in an online group, online forum of young professionals. Most were job seekers or looking for better jobs. 
uh, that time they were called Google Groups and Yahoo Groups. So it was for young professionals. We joined with the name of maybe getting better jobs um, in the group because they would share job vacancies there. But then people started discussing politics. So we were in the group for a whole year. I, I, Simon, among other people, we were among the most active. You know, we have dormant members in a group and active yeah. members. Yeah. So he used to like the way I uh, made contributions in the group. And I also used to like the way he would make sober contributions in the group. You know, there are some people who just go to the group to just cause fire. Yeah. <laughs> So he's the one who could cool the fire and everything. So I liked the way his cont way of contributing in the group. So at the end of the year after elections, people uh, thought that it's good we meet and know each other because we just know each other by the names and profile photos. So we they they so they selected us to organize the getaway for p people to meet. Two of you. Yes. <laughs> we, uh, so. We, we, we organized, we still hadn't met, uh, but on the day of the trip is when we met for the first time. Uh, I guess it's the best movie you've ever made in your whole life. I agree. And um, you, you see, uh, when uh, that particular time we had not even started the company. And when we did the the first uh, the first we were with uh, with some other people you, you know the organization was me sarah and some other few people like a committee of like yes. five people <clears throat> like, like like a committee then we posted the when we went to the first the first time we met uh we were told uh we were told the guys who missed the first one said why can't we organize the second one mm. and we were to the same guys who organized the first one organize the second one we were in the second one, it was very successful, we posted the photos on Facebook and people said we still need another one. So, uh, d d during the, the third, some people, because it was just a free thing, yeah. we, were not, we were not charging anything. Imagine the dedication, the sacrifice to organize for people without even adding anything. Then the, the third, we found me and Sarah, we are the one who organizes the, the other people had, had, had just retired or for, had got, they had gotten tired. Mm. Then we found ourselves organizing the, the, that one and it was during that particular time, someone from a corporate asked us, can you guys do team building? We said yes, we can do team building. So we found ourselves, me and Sarah, organizing a team building for a certain corporate. So we organized a team building and they said they will not pay us until we, we, we deliver. So they, they didn't pay us at first. Then that particular time of payment, we thought they would pay us through the M-Pesa. No, they said, no, no, we are corporate, we can only pay to a bank account and using a check. We didn't, we only had our personal bank account. We said we cannot pay to a personal account. So that prompted me and Sarah to open a company. That was Born for Adventures. And how the, the, the name came about, I remember that particular time we were somewhere, because it was before Easter, we wanted to, now because people were asking, our friends were asking us, where else do we go, where else do we go, where else do we go? So we went, we said we go to Masai Mara Sasa with Sarah to, organ, to check where people can go for Easter. Fact-finding mission. Yes, fact-finding mission. When we were in Mara that particular time, that night, I remember there was a bonfire. And a lady who, from that corporate now, who was paying us, mm. asked us, that's the time we had that co co conversation, she was asking us, where do we pay the money? Which check do we write? Because we had cleared the news. That's the time we said, what might bring us to Masai Mara? Again, there was bonfire, and that's how the name Bonfire Adventures came about. Does it mean that at that time you guys were not married, or were you dating? No, we were not married. You're not even dating. You are not even dating. We're not even dating. Not even dating. <laughs> okay, he was making his moves, but <laughs> I, I was not yet really? sure. <laughs> so, which year was this? That, that was 2008 or 9. So, you guys were working as friends in the, from a group, yes. a yes. team? Yes, yes. <laughs> and after that, uh, we started. Now, because of. Uh, now, now uh, we, we didn't have an office. We didn't have. Anything we were working in, me was from a sales and marketing background, mm. and her she was the office administration accounts 
um, background. So she, uh, me, I used to travel a lot within Kenya as a salesperson. Mm. So her, so we, we didn't have an office, but I had a brother who had a small desk in town, which he was not, he was not using it. Uh, he told me, why can't you, why can't I rent out this desk for you, one desk? So the desk used to cost us 10,000 shillings per month. Mm -hmm. And that's where now we started. Uh, we, I had a laptop, she had a laptop, and that's how our business uh, started. 10,000 shillings only, that, that's like $100. After, after mm -hmm. when we started working together, our friends started asking us, where else do we travel to? We started organizing for them. So uh, we used to, that desk, she used to come, because she was very near, her, her office place was near the, our, our office, mm. our desk. So she used to come over lunchtime and, and maybe I come in the evening so that we meet our friends who are wanted Some to travel. pancake for the tea. Mm. Now, when now we started staying in the office uh, to, together, I started looking at her. Now, thinking, now this, this guy. No, the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, one thing led mm. to another. We had like, one year of well, quoting from 2008 to mm. 2009, mm. where we got m m m married in June 2009. After two years? Yes. After, yes, like how, after two years. How do both of you feel right now in terms of how far you've come? It's this song uh, that says, seems like we made it. You know it? Mm. When we when we were during that journey, mm. we would say in in Kikuyu we say no kogeria. <laughs> just trying. Mm. We you know, were just a trying. In Kenya. It was not say. that serious. We were just trying. But then it happened. We are not yet there. Mm. Uh, but we we would say at the moment we are beyond our wildest. Like we even didn't dream to be here, so we are beyond our dreams. Now we are now having to redream our life again because yes. we are now living beyond our dreams. So we feel now we cannot be at comfort zone. We mm. need to redream our life again. Yes, we always shift our targets. Maybe that particular time our target was to have this. Then we achieved that. Now what next? We put our target here. So our target was to be, maybe we achieved there. Now we progress on, and that keep all, that is what keep, keep keeps us, keeps our life busy because it challenges us always. Let me do this before I go to the question that I really want to ask. So far, how many trips have you guys organized for people? Oh, uncountable. Uncountable. Maybe uh, roughly like a thousand trips a month. Yes, a month. So. You can uh, count now the number of for months. The, uh, of course, for the, for the first year, the fifth year, it wasn't like that. So we've not done our calculation. Yes, but we thank God that we are now in the Billionaires Club officially. Whoa! And a round of applause for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this club means that you, you, you're now billionaires. Yeah, that your company is now making... Uh, yeah, it's worth billions. You see, before I dive into that, uh -huh. let's go from um, how was life growing up? Because I believe that there are so many people sitting in their various houses watching this video, mm -hmm. being like, okay, where I am at the moment, will I be able to reach this far, just mm -hmm. like the um, Kabu family? Mm -hmm. yes. So let's go back a little bit. Yo. Before bonfire, mm -hmm. growing up in Kenya, how was life? First, I'd like to tell you, that person who is watching this video, you as as big as your dreams. What you just need to do is just to wake up and chase your dreams. It means if you just sleep, you just sleep on your dream, but wake up and chase them. You can dream anything. I I grew up from a very humble background, going to school without shoes. If you check my legs uh, and uh, carrying the ash. I don't know, because it was not cemented. Mm. We used to carry ash th those days because of the jiggers. You see, you, see, you carry ash and sprinkle and some water, uh, eating cold food and sometimes not having uh, f f food at all. But I, I, I had a dream to that particular time. I passed very well. From class, class one to class eight, 
I used to be position one except class six, which I became position two. And I cried very much. So I used to be a, a bright kid. Uh, then from there I progressed to a provincial, uh, now a national high school, then I went to the university. My business acumen started when I was at the university. I went to Egerton University. And when I was there, I used to I, I used to show people some, you know, to screen some movies for people. That's the business I used to do. Even the people who have first row Egerton, they, they already know someone. I used to have a brand name called Kavidio. Mm -hmm. I used to, to show people the um, videos. After that, I, 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 I left the university. I went to, I, I was employed in a sales job uh, where I used to work like 18 or 19 hours a day. A graduate working 18 or 19 hours a day because I wanted to gain experience too. And that's where now my luck started. But before that, I remember when I was at, at, at the university, at one particular point before I started the, the movie job, uh, I used to be a tout, you know? I don't know whether yeah. you know what's yeah. a tout. The tout. matato tout. Yeah. That's what the job I, I, I used to do here in Nairobi. It's called Route uh, 44, Gedurai, Dika Road. That's what I used to do. I have done that. I started as a tout. I graduated to be a driver. But because I didn't have school fees, the college fees, at one particular point, and my parents could not support me. So I had two options. One, to drop out of the university or to come out of the university, look for fees and go back and complete my education. I opted for the latter. I came out of the university for one year, then came and looked for school fees as a tout and later as a driver. Then I went back to school and completed my university. So I was born and brought up uh, in a Christian family in Embu County, that is uh, in the Kenyan Highlands, uh, Mount Kenya Highlands, uh, in a family of eight. Uh, I'm the seventh born, uh, four girls, four boys. Uh, I did a lot of courses uh, in college. I was not sure what I really wanted to do. I did a diploma in IT. I did some accounting. I did some business administration. Most of these courses I would start and not finish, uh, but finally I found myself settlement in the tourism industry. Uh, so it's always good to know your purpose early, know your passion, uh, what you like doing, uh, and which career that can connect with, so that you start following your passion early. So, Atiha, how was your meeting? Uh, the meeting was good. Uh, the school is very excited and we, of course, won. It, it was tough competition. We were about five competitors, but we won the group. Oh, they yes. have promised to do the check on Monday. So they'll be going for the World Scholars. Have you heard of World Scholars? Yeah. I love the fact that both of you go for different meetings, but one common goal. Yes, because... <laughs> How was yours, by the way? It was... My, mine was good. My, mine was a different kind of a meeting. Yes. It's a business. It's a bigger business, <laughs> which I cannot... Uh... Have, have you done a game drive at Nairobi National Park? No. Hey, when you and you've to come it? to Ma Nairobi so when many times. When do you want to do it? I love that question. <laughs> Knowing that he used to be a tout, yes, and uh, he, he also became a matatu driver. Yes. And now driving your own vehicle without passengers. <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel? Uh, um, you see, uh, it makes me feel good, and uh, uh, sometimes I not necessarily too long, but. Sometimes when I see, you know the way people, the Matatu people drive, uh, people, other people think they are a little bit reckless, but they have strong targets, they have a lot of targets, and that's why you have to do a 
lot of trips, many of them. So when I see them trying to uh, to, 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 to cut uh, to cut uh, in front of me, I know this, this guy has some targets. So I normally put myself there and imagine. I'm just, I just give them the way. What kind of target are you talking about? Yeah, you see, matter to people, uh, they, they, they normally have direct targets. So the more whatever money you are supposed to take to the owner. If you don't uh, achieve that, tomorrow will not be, you will not be working. So when I see them trying to uh, to cut in front of me, I know this guy has not achieved his target. And to achieve your target, you have to make a lot of trips. The many trips that you make, the more you are able to achieve the target. Welcome to Bonfire. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, that time, 15 years ago. It was two ago. of you. Yes, two years, uh, 15 years ago, two of us. When you enter this office mm -hmm. and they see a number of people working for you guys, yes. how does that make you feel? Oh,